On this episode of Star Trek Universe, we are going to be talking about some of the big theories about who the big bad of Star Trek Picard Season 3 might be. And we're also covering your feedback for Episode 308, right after these words from our mystery sponsors. Welcome to Star Trek Universe, the podcast where you get to listen in on two lifelong buddies cracking open a cold one and chatting about the stars. My name's Matthew Carroll. <laughs> I'm David C. Robertson. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, man. So, yeah, I just, I thought it would be really fun, because I've been, like, scrolling around on Twitter and seeing all these really fun theories, and there's some that are yeah. just, like, out there. Just, like, I'm yeah. not even talking about those. <laughs> but there hey, are, man, like... I. I say, if you got any that are, give me, give me two completely out there ones. Give me two completely out there. Well, ones. okay, here I got four. Okay, and yeah, the throw first, them at me. the first two are really out there, and the other two are pretty seem pretty plausible. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm in. T- tell right. me, so, so I'm assuming some of these have like supporting, uh, Supporting information, like some some thoughts from the episodes or stuff like that. <laughs> one of them really doesn't. <laughs> okay, all right. And the the other one kind of does, but anyway, okay. so you yeah. do you you do you boo. Come on, throw right. them at me. So the most out there theory for me, even though I really like the verbiage of it, um, is <laughs> is Red Jack from the original series, A Wolf in the Fold. Uh, a lot of people are saying they think it's Red Jack because Red Door plus Jack Crusher equals Red Jack. Now, Red Jack was an alien entity who possessed men and killed a whole bunch of women throughout the galaxy. It was also discovered that this was the alien entity that uh, was turned out to be Jack the Ripper mm. <laughs> on Earth, and it fed on fear and pain. It was also a cloud creature. Which okay. could have been foreshadowed when they were trapped in the cloud entity earlier this season. To me, that's about all they got on that one. Well, also feeding on pain. The, we know that these uh, changelings are constantly in pain, and mm-hmm. if, if they work, if they're working closely and telepathically linked to the point that they're controlling the fluid of the hand to to be some sort of I don't know. I'm guessing that's part of the telepathy. I don't know. Um, I don't know. You know what? Uh, I, I was thinking about it, and this is something I thought of. I meant to write down, but I didn't. But I'm glad I thought of it today. Uh, hey. We did get confirmation. I don't think we talked about this last week. That it's not a changeling. Like mm. there, there was still some, you know. And, and you know what that confirmation is? No, I don't remember. Deanna, she could t- she sense the dark force. It's oh, controlling yeah. them. And Deanna, they they mentioned it in this episode, which was something from DS9 that. Uh, the uh, Betazoids can't sense uh, changelings, and she oh, yeah. can't on this as well. Uh, she mentions it; she can't sense them, but she can sense whoever's controlling them. Yeah, and and whoever's working through Jack or whatever. Uh, there's a guitar, or no? Maybe you know what? I, I was thinking that whoever that is on the, I'm, I may be wrong because what she is sensing is whatever's controlling Jack. Yeah. Never mind. We don't know who's controlling. Uh, the, the, we don't know that's the same person. For some reason, I had right. it in my head that was the same person. Ugh. We don't. We don't so know. That, that's, that's the thing. a great point. We've been saying this dark force, and I was kind of just combining those two dark forces into one. But, like, that could be two, uh, like, you know, random pulls from Star mm-hmm. Trek lore. You know what I mean? <laughs> really good. Wow. Really good. What if, what if this is like yes. a combination of just like every <laughs> Star Trek little lore thing and yeah. just thrown in? Oh, it's so exciting. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Um, so the other one that I think is really out there that uh, is Armus from The Next Generation's Skin of Evil. If you okay. recall, Armus yeah, is the Armus, black yeah. oil creature that killed Tasha Yar. He's a shapeshifter. He's, you know, got the psychokinetic energy or whatever it's called. Like, he can is it, mess with, you know. It's, am I, it's, is it, is, it's my first time thinking about it, but the fact that, like, if you put, like, Tasha Yar together, it kind of makes Tar, and she was killed by Armus, with it was, like, a little Tar <laughs> creature. I don't know why that never dawned on me till this moment, but if you, uh-huh. like, 
Tosh, if you go T Yar, it sounds yeah. like her. Sounds like foreshadowing of her death. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly can't. I, I can't really fathom that this is Armus at all. Like to me, this is like the only reason is he's kind of, he is kind of a changeling. I guess is the only like thing. I mean, the only reason he's a little closer to what I think is true than Red Jack is because I don't think they're gonna dig dig deep into TOS. Right. Most likely not. If they do, I don't think I think it'll be something foundational like preserver level stuff. You know what I mean? Like right. I think it'll be something foundational to the universe, not just some random cloud. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh so number three on the big theory list, and I I like this one the most. All right. The Pa Wraith. Ooh. Now I heard someone uh post, I think it may have been an infinite potato. Or something because I get hmm. I see a lot of their Star Trek posts. Okay, um, it may have been on a random Star Trek post because I have way too many Star Trek groups followed on. Me Facebook. too. When I scroll Facebook, you know, like Facebook senses what you actually stop to look at, and yeah. so like it, like Star Trek is like my entire feed. It's so funny, like almost <laughs> every day. Like so, that's apparently what my like f- my my just scrolling finger does. If it sees Star Trek, it stops. Uh-huh. Um, anyway, <laughs> the uh, old scrolling finger. Someone uh, said that they thought that might be Gold Ducat. Yeah. Which, and the, and yeah. the person who posted, and I, I want to say it was one of the potato guys, I may be wrong, said, the more I think about it, the more I like it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he was last seen falling into, like, those flames of into the, the fire Wraith. Caves. Yeah. So it could be some, like, you know, eternal Gold Ducat Pa Wraith version mm-hmm. of Golducott, which would connect because he was serving the founders when he la- we last saw him, so like uh-huh. it all kind of uh, connects there. When uh, when Golducott was possessed by the by the uh, Pa Wraith, his eyes turned red. Mm. Jack is getting visions of fire. The voice of someone Jack knows. That's like when when the prophets yep. or the Pa Wraith talk to you, they'd come to you as people you know. Yep. Um, yep. Let's see possession. That's obviously a thing. The Paw Wraiths possess people without consent. Uh, that, and also, like, they do weird shit that's, like, out of time. Like, they go back and make uh, uh, <laughs> make her fall in love with Cisco or something, right? Like, isn't no, that, that was No, that was the prophets. That was actually the good That's guys. what I mean. That's what I mean. Sorry. Yeah. The, the, those same type of entities yes, did that. Yes, yes. Which, like, maybe part of the reason we don't fully understand the plan what if Federation? What if the next episode is Federation Day, and it just comes and goes, and there was yeah. no big evil plan for Federation Day, and that was just them being like Federation centric, you know? And then they realize that like this is actually some great plan that they're like Jack Crusher and Sydney are supposed to have a kid that's gonna like take down the future or something, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. the Paw Wraith are playing fourth dimensional uh, chess. Well, I was trying to think of a better like Star Trek game, but I know three dimensional chess is a, yeah. is a Star Trek. A but Star fourth Trek dimensional, thing. what's a, what's a good like just Star Trek game though? What's a good like fourth dimensional? I don't know, man. I think chess, just because of the three dimensional chess. Fine, fine. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. No, it's cool. Fourth dimensional Dabo. Thank you. There you go. That's all. That's what I needed. I couldn't think of a good Star Trek game. Okay. <laughs> Playing fourth dimensional Dabu. Thank you. Uh, fourth dimensional Alamorain. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, so they also gave Gold Ducat strength and increased strength and reflexes. Mm. Um, we have a fiery looking portal that very mildly resembles the Paw Wraith entity when it was released from the Bajoran statue by Gold Ducat All right. in DS9. Um Vatic sounds a whole hell of a lot like Vedic, who were the the uh, yeah the the, the Bajoran priests and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Um, the Pa Wraith would be ancient and weak. Hmm. That is true. I like that. Ancient, dark, and weak. Hmm. Hmm. And that you know there are a lot of people online who believe that, like you said, uh, shapeshifter face is Gold Ducat. Hmm. But and, and you know, and I would say Terry Metalis did give us Gold Ducat's skull and a pike and alternate Picard's trophy room in season two. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, so yeah, I really like that theory. Um, the only problem with that one for me is like, I feel like if they did Gold Ducat, they would have to do Cisco. Yeah. Right. I, I kind of feel like it's not really Picard's story to get into. Mm hmm. I and agree the, with that. And I mean, we've had that discussion a lot. Like thematically, we want it to be something Picard would face. Mm hmm. But. I, yeah, Them, I still would love them, to see Gold Ducat return, you know? Yeah, like, thematically, when you look at Picard's arc, when you look at Seven of Nine's arc, the real theory is the Borg. Sure. Right? And, look, this is, this has got the most evidence behind it, I feel like. Um, okay. Last episode, Jack Crusher literally told Vatic, there's really no point in resisting. Resistance is futile. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, the So Beverly was listening in episode one, was listening to logs from the best of both worlds. That Hellbird code was something from when he was from Locutus. From best of both worlds. Yep. Uh, Shaw's Wolf 359 story. Jack told Vatic oh, there's no yeah. point in resisting. The body of Picard was stolen and the Locutus headpiece part was dark on Picard's face. Um there is a lot of conjecture that the diamond with the line through it that Jack made with the straw slash the graphic we see in the end credits looks like the Queen's diamond ship from Voyager mm. or may represent a transwarp conduit. We also can't okay. dis- discount that the portal weapon that it is, you know, signifying the portal weapon at the beginning of the show. Um, Jack may be the perfect assimilation. Beverly said in Best of Both Worlds that the Borg literally changed Picard's DNA. So if they had, like, nanites in his blood that they couldn't really detect. Right. They they say in Best of Both Worlds we removed everything we could. Mm-hmm. Um, and there could have been something more. What if it's a, what if that's all part of it? What if Locutus, man, oh gosh, this right? is really going deep. What if we combine these two? We talked about this time travel, blah, blah, blah. What if the Pa Wraith, what if Locutus and his assimilation was all part of a plan from the Pa Wraith to, like, create Jack Crusher? <laughs> and it's, it's the story that I just spun up in my head, yeah. but it happened 30, 40 years ago. Wouldn't that be dope? It would be dope as fuck. They, they created their own Cisco, their own emissary, and yes. Jack Crusher and using Jack the Crusher. board. Oh, and then you get this, like, Jack Crusher. You could get a great Jack Crusher, like, on this legacy show where uh-huh. he is the emissary of the Pa Wraith. Like, that's his, like, that's his, you know, purpose in life. That's why he exists. But it's him having to, like, try to tri- be his own man in the face uh-huh. of him being the emissary of the Pa Wraith. And what does that mean to him? Like, what plan do they have for him? Can he <laughs> avoid his own fate? Yeah. Like, that that kind of stuff. And, like, you could totally see the end of this series. Like, they say they, they decide to save Jack anyway, even though they know what he is. They find out all this stuff. They know what he is. They save yeah. him. And then, you know, Picard has a hand on his shoulder and says, like, no, you have to choose who you are. Like, no one gets to tell you who yeah. you are. And then that just sets him off on his own show where he can be, like, his own, build his own yeah. legacy, you know? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's what I want now. Yeah, <laughs> that's I could, really I could good. deal with that. I could deal with that, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, um, Picard could hear the voices. He could hear the Borg, just like Jack senses, hears voices. Mm-hmm. Um, Deanna said it was ancient and weak, which could be true Borg, not the Jurati Borg now, but the original Borg that were cut off from everything. Right. Which is why they would be weak. Um, interestingly, the next episode that's coming out is called Vox, which is Latin for voice, and Locutus mm-hmm. is Latin for spoken. Mm. <laughs> I love this. I love this theory so much that we have like sewn together just now. I love it so much. And think about this. What if like ever since, like what if the Borg, you know, infected by the Paw Wraith, maybe possessed by the Paw Wraith, like the single voice of the Borg possessed by the Paw Wraith were like an instrument of the Paw Wraith back at Wolf 359. And they were really the villains of the of like Shaw's story and of Picard's story, the Pa yeah. Wraith have been there since the since like all of this stuff, like weaving this demon history into the background, and then you get that that so that's a great face off for all of these characters. Mm-hmm. 
but it's also great because what if like the Borg had since like purged it, have gotten rid of the Paw Wraith, or maybe after the Gold Ducat incidents, they're no longer they've been banished or whatever, uh-huh. and like the Borg are protecting the universe from the emergence of the Paw Wraith through that giant space portal at the end of season thir- two. You know, a solitary Metallus said that. Jurati Borg is not coming back, and they're not revisiting that portal. Okay, in Picard season three. So just throw it out. Unless he's point. lying. Where is that portal then? What the hell? How do you end on a cliffhanger like that and never go back to it? I don't know that they're never going to go back to I it. I mean, it's just sure. a thing that's there that they're guarding. But on this show, they're never going back yeah. to it. it. Would be yeah. kind of an insane. Like I've, that's unprecedented to me. To like. Have something like that happen. No explanation for it. Set up a mystery box, if you will, mm-hmm. and then not not. I mean, not, I'm assuming they know what's behind that big portal. Oh, I don't think so. Oh, you don't. If they are really not planning on going back to it, they don't know. Like, mm. and in a way, I kind of dig it. I in a big way, I hate it, but in a big way, I dig it because what's more TNG than setting up a mystery that never gets resolved? Yeah, like. <laughs> Well, like, now we they know, did we it know constantly on TNG. <laughs> right. We know what's behind them. It's those little conspiracy aliens. <laughs> that's what's Actually, behind those portal. That's my little bonus. That's not my, my bonus theory because I, <laughs> the, 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 like, the, I watched the preview for the next episode for the, uh-huh. that's coming out. And there's a line where Worf is like, this entire conspiracy comes down to this day or something like that. And I'm like, conspiracy? That was the title <laughs> of that episode. <laughs> What if all of this has been a red herring because those little bugs are coming back? Red herring? That's the red jack again. We're back to the beginning. Uh, so so do you have any other just like completely ridiculous? <laughs> what's the most ridiculous? Tell me like you said there's some they're so stupid you don't want to mention, but I, I beg you to throw at me like just some stupid theories. You don't have to support them. Don't give me all the evidence. It's just like what's the stupidest theory you heard this week? Because um, I don't well, follow as closely as you do. I didn't, I didn't like write them down, but you remember that episode like (laughs) where, so I can't remember like names and shit, but you remember that like the giant cloud with the face when they got flung into like, I think, uh, Wesley was messing around with the traveler and then they wound up like thousands of light years away in some like other galaxy and there's like a cloud face or something and. Yeah, it was like like weird. Yeah, it was almost they, like they were inside of cells or something. Right. It was like there was that. They think it's like the giant cloud face. <laughs> and I'm like, why? Why? <laughs> why would it like? even be that? I mean, you um, can, the thing is, it's Star Trek. You can make it do be anything. Like any of these yeah. things could be written. We've been sitting here spinning a yarn for 15 minutes now about all these different ways that it could be these things and yeah, you combine, mix and match, whatever. <sighs> yeah. I'm excited, and, you man. know, I, I saw, uh, you know, one person kind of cook up, a, a. I think it was like college level, let me, let me, you know, state my thesis and prove my point, but it didn't track for me at all. Uh, it was like, just like, it's, me, it's the Metrons from Arena, from the original series. I'm like, why? Like, why, yeah. you know, why would it be? Like, thematically, why would it be? Like, that's not completing an arc. That's not, <laughs> it's not telling a story. Right. It's just like, left field, boom, here's a thing. Like, yeah. oh, okay. I hope it's something so great and that we never thought of. You know what I mean? Like, I really yeah. hope it's just something so good. And so far this season, they've done a really good job of doing things that I didn't expect that really blew me away. Yeah. So I'm, I'm wanting something like that again. And, I know that's a hard, it's the hardest thing to do is to put the answer right in front of our faces and us never see it. Yeah. But of course I'm still kind of like, as much as I want this to be the original crew and like them to have this adventure together, I'm still not fully convinced one of them isn't a changeling, you know, like yeah, yeah. one of them could absolutely have been either be or have been a changeling this whole time. I don't think that's going to happen. Just yeah. because I think Terry Metalis is a big enough fan that he's like, I don't want to have any of the original seven be a changeling. Yeah. Well, if it's not one of the seven, maybe it's the seven. Nah, I don't think it's seven of nine. <laughs> <laughs> I legit, I legit don't like. He's no, actually good friends with her. He used to be like a freaking page on Voyager. I, he's, sure. it, they came on at the same time. They're, well, yeah, they're but friends. that doesn't mean I don't think I don't know. He's gonna man. do that. Sure, I, don't think he's gonna I, do I hear you. I hear you. 
But that, like, just because he's friends with the actress and stuff doesn't necessarily yeah. mean that he couldn't do, uh, it wouldn't undo much for her. And it wouldn't, like... I guess not. I guess, like, it wouldn't undo much for her. She could be in a prison somewhere. She'd come on for the last episode as a conquering hero, blow herself up, you know? Well, it would undo... It would un- it would honestly undo a lot of the really, like, choice character moments in this season for her. Yeah. There's a few good ones. But Several it could be someone ones. else. It could be someone like uh, Sydney, or, you know, someone else that, like, we think of as a... Yeah. Uh, as, like, kind of a close crew member now. Could be Shaw. Shaw could be a changeling, you know, like man, be I'd be so mad. This, be, me too. Uh, and then, we, then so they angry. they they go rescue the real Shaw, and he's just like a, the nicest guy. <laughs> yeah, man, I don't want that. <laughs> I kind of do. I kind of do now. Just that specifically, like they rescue the real Shaw, and he's just like, uh, he used to say what to you guys? That's terrible. <laughs> Why did no one think? Why did everyone think that was me? That's I'm, it. We're going back to my quarters, and I'm baking. I'm baking you cupcakes. That's what I'm doing with the yeah. rest of my day. <laughs> I know I've been in prison, but you guys have been through a lot. It's an old trick I learned from reading Captain Pike's logs. <laughs> you guys can't see. I was stirring a big bowl of batter. <laughs> of his, yeah, it's um, I should have. I should have given. I should have given the subtitles or the. The, uh, yeah, speech along. Have you seen that on uh, Amazon where you can like, uh, it's it's an accessibility feature, but you can turn on like, uh, voice, like descriptions of what's happening. No, um, it, it, no, it's, 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 heard. it's a feature where you can like, it's for people that I guess are uh, blind people. Uh, or people that are hard of hard of seeing or whatever, like hard of hearing. <laughs> you almost said hard of hearing. Well, no, no, no. I was trying to say hard of sight or something like <laughs> poor. They have poor sight. I don't know. Whatever. I don't know the right yeah. term. If they're not fully blind, but they're whatever. Visually uh, impaired. That's that's the words I'm looking for. Uh, mm. But I started to go hard of because I was thinking about hearing, but then I didn't know what word to say. Uh, anyway, the hard it's, of peeping. It's, it's an accessibility feature. <laughs> That allows them to experience the show. So it's like they time it in between the dialogue and it'll say like, you know, Captain Picard swings around and fires his phaser at the da da da. And then they'll continue. It's like a little voice comes in. Does it? It's great for when you're like busy and something's on in the background. <laughs> like, uh-huh. It's, it's kind of great. <laughs> Some of those things, though, they get really aggravating. I can't remember what I was watching. But the, some <laughs> someone was speaking Spanish and the show literally gave us Spanish subtitles, and mm-hmm. then the closed captioning came in on top of it, and like where I couldn't see what they were saying, and oh, just yeah, said yeah. speaking Spanish. Yeah, that's so funny. It's like trying to give you the, the trying to give you the real words or like the the English words, and it's like <laughs> just saying speaking Spanish. Or it's, that's so funny. I've like, you guys could have not done that. <laughs> yep, for sure. Uh, okay, so. Let's yeah. uh let's let's get into something something else. What are we doing? What, what, feedback. What we feedback. Feedback. We got we got a bunch of feedback. Yeah. All right. Um, the first fifty seven of them were from Tim Castillo. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> did he did he live tweet the episode? <laughs> no, no, no. I think he just had several. He had like three or four things he wanted to say. He sent me a lot of short things. He said. Uh, Mommy's all right, daddy's all right, but Jack seems a little weird. He says, uh, hey, Dave, I feel I owe you a deep apology. I was not upset about LOL. That was meant as a joke, a friendly ribbing. You had said a general fan reaction to LOL not being brought up much throughout the Picard series was somewhat pedantic. I've never said the word pedantic because I don't know what it means. Mm-hmm. And I was just referring to, <laughs> to some ship design quibbles you've had in the past episodes. I feel bad. Uh. I do apologize. Hearing you read that, it sounded insulting, and that was not my intention. Dude, I wasn't offended. I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah, we, I don't. I don't remember. Uh, the if last I remember episode. correctly, yeah, that, that <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't that we didn't. We were offended. It was we didn't remember what he was referencing. I was like, I don't. Yeah. Get, I don't get what he's talking about. But okay, yeah. well, he was just making fun of you for not uh for the ships thing. Right. I got you. Um. So in the next episode, uh, sorry, in the next email, Tim says, "Hey Dave, Dave you broke your little ships." Hell. <laughs> um, in the next email, he says, Dave and Matt, you guys are awesome. Just wanted to say that. And apologies again for not being good at jokes. I'll keep <laughs> this one short. 
<laughs> I'll keep this one short. It was awesome, though somewhat on the nose, to have them all around the table again. I'll be darned if I didn't love it, though. I've got no idea what this thing is, with Jack is. Ancient? Dark? Are they bringing back masks? <laughs> well, they already did in Lower Decks. <laughs> Wouldn't that be crazy? They show up back at Earth in a space temple to rescue civilization. I would be remiss if I did not express my gratitude in your podcasting. Thank you. And then... In another email says, Inner Skin of Evil? Matt and Dave. Not my idea. I heard it I heard it from another podcast, but could Armus be what is affecting Jack? No, I don't think so. Could he have gotten off that planet somehow? Maybe. Anyway, cutting myself off even though I want to write more. Joe Lontru. Tim, you can always write more. We don't mind. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I you know, yeah, but I don't think it's Armus, as I previously mentioned. And by the way, that's not where I got the, uh, I don't read these <laughs> before I put them, I say them on the air. So <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I, I think I have a more genuine reaction when I don't read things. Every once in a while I yeah. get in trouble. But, uh, yeah, man, me too. Most of the time, <laughs> most of the time it's fine. Yeah. So yeah, write whatever you want to. I don't think it's Armus, but, um, I mean, I, I hope they do it well if it is. Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey on YouTube says prediction. Troy is not Troy, but a changeling. Mm. She doesn't need, she doesn't need to be telepathic to know about Jack's red door. Vatic knew about the door. Uh, I like how Patrick Stewart got to revive his role as professor X. When he spoke to Jack about his special powers, <laughs> <laughs> there was stranger things esque music in this episode as well. Hmm. Yeah. I think Deanna would be a great call for a possible changeling. She's only been there for one episode. It was a nice, some nice touching moments, but uh-huh. like, it could also be some pretty great moments if she showed up in episode ten, shot herself, and then like, I can't believe you thought that was me. Like, no, we're not back together. I'm not okay with this. Da da da. You yeah. know, like, and then. Off on to their own, sh- off on yeah. to their own show where like he's trying to win her back or whatever, you know. <laughs> I would laugh if Troy shows up as shoots changeling Troy, and then she's like, "I can't believe none of you knew it wasn't me." We're going <laughs> yeah. back to the table and having that again. Because that's <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <laughs> we we got another email uh, from the Willem Willem Gallo, the guy that called us fake woke. Oh, okay. Hey, Willem. <laughs> Uh, it says, good on you boys for answering my last email on air. I didn't think you had the balls to pubically, I think he means publicly, announce the <laughs> critique of your so-called work. But it works since you said balls. <laughs> 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 After listening to the last episode, I have to say, Matt, when Dave disagrees with you, it is not necessary to regurgitate the same exact argument you just made two or three more times. <laughs> Sometimes I do that. It's true. Dave, Dave, may, <laughs> Dave may be slow on the uptake, but most of us aren't, and it makes for a poor listening experience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, is, I'm worse than that. I'm terrible. I, I like. I, I just. I, I, I'm glad there are people out there who like me as a podcaster. But when I listen yeah. back, I often will cut out myself repeating myself because I'm like. Uh, you know, when, when I when I'm editing it or whatever, uh, because uh, what I what I what I do is it's even worse. Is someone will say something and then I repeat what they said back to them and then disagree with it. So like, <laughs> it, it, yeah, but I do it all the time, and I, I don't know. I think, uh, yeah, you know, it's just it's how I have conversations. Sorry. Yeah. No. I mean, I do my best. <laughs> I think I would rather do that than what I do, which is like just say um, like you know, and then just like peter off into the abyss because it can't get the words <laughs> yeah um, I, I edit most of those out though <laughs> those are yeah. those are easy to catch when i'm the one when i'm the one because i put down markers to what i need to edit out right so when you're when you actually do that when you have like a trail yeah. off moment you know that's easy oh there's a trail off moment hit the hit the marker button come back to it mm-hmm. and then you know sometimes you just compose yourself and you get into it and we edit that little moment out you sound yeah. you sound whip smart but me like i'm <laughs> engaged <laughs> <laughs> I'm engaged in thinking I'm podcasting and really I'm just repeating what the other person said and then disagreeing with it with the thing that I said before they talked. Yeah. So now that you guys know that, uh, yeah. those of you who hadn't noticed it before, now you won't be able to unnotice it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm sorry I did this to myself. 
<laughs> just ruined my podcasting career. <laughs> Uh, I'll tell you this. I, I was in Target the other day, and I was thinking about getting a thing, and then I saw another thing I wanted to get. I couldn't decide if I wanted to get only one thing or the other thing, or if I wanted to get both things, or if I wanted to get neither thing. Mm-hmm. So I wound up like I kind of walked. I was holding both things, walked up to the front, decided, no, I'm getting rid of both of them, walked back to the back. And then I just stood there in a complete state of indecision, and I was just standing there holding both things. And I know I was there for a while, <laughs> but one of the one of the employees at Target walked up to me and said, "Sir, are you lost?" <laughs> I felt so, I felt like I was eighty. <laughs> you looked like you needed to like be returned to your home. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I realized I had to be just standing there, like holding a couple of toys with like a. Like a slightly terrified, agitated look on my face. Just, yeah, it is ah. so. Fr- it is so frustrating and scary when someone else who you don't know sees you and they see through you like that. You know, like yeah. they look at you and they go, "Man," and you just realize how you look to the rest of the world, and they've like spot on. They're like, "Yeah, they they can tell I didn't have my shit together in that moment." <laughs> yeah, this is why I like go like behind the toy aisle and like hide behind the toy aisle. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I guess I got to try to figure out what I'm doing here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, Willem continues. Sorry, Willem. Uh, in this instance, I think Dave was correct. However, that Vatic, he said Vatic, Vatic and her crew. <laughs> ooh, oh, foreshadowing. No, uh, Vatic and her crew <laughs> needed to be put down. There's no moral quandary, no great dilemma. Vatic bad, changeling bad, terrorist <laughs> hell bent on kidnapping Jack and doing God knows what at the Federation event. Remember, Picard was very okay with sending Hugh back to the Borg with that virus until Beverly convinced him otherwise. And now that psycho has a kid. (laughs) (laughs) And as we discussed a couple episodes ago, you get a kid, it makes you a monster, even more of a monster. (laughs) Anyway, maybe I'll listen a bit longer. After all, you boys may get your emotional problems worked out and make a good show sometime. (laughs) I doubt it. I I truly doubt it. (laughs) Here's the thing. When when Willem first messaged us, I was like, what a dick. And now I'm kind of getting it. Like, I'm kind of like, you know what? I think I really enjoy Willem's emails. Yeah, for sure. Now, here's the thing. I he's an asshole to us, and that's funny. Yeah, but, and we and sometimes <laughs> we need that. Um, uh huh. No, the thing is, like, <laughs> on this show specifically, uh, the uh-huh. main reason I do this show, and this is why we open the show this way, I do this yeah. show to hang out with you, Dave. So, okay. Like, I love Star Trek. And this mm-hmm. is like been what we do since we were six years old. We yeah. sit around and chat about Star Trek, like almost every time we're together. Um, if it's not Star Trek, it's something similar. And yeah, uh, yeah it's what we do. And we don't get to do it anymore because you're busy and I'm busy, and we don't like work together or like right. have intersecting lives anymore. So this is our like chance to do that. And I hope people enjoy it. But like. We're just being us, and that's really yeah. like genuinely, especially on this one. There are other podcasts that I'm really trying to like be somebody figure, else. And- yeah, well, not not to be somebody <laughs> else, but trying to like like like. There's different goals, I guess, of different uh-huh. podcasts. Like the MCU cast, we're like trying to really stay on top of the MCU and like talk about the in depth inner workings of the MCU and all that stuff, you know. And uh-huh. then there's like the um. Uh, and talk. Uh, there's multiverse news now that we're doing. By the way, check out multiverse news, brand new. Um, so we're trying to really like do a news show, you know, it's a news show. So we're trying to like be informative and like, I try to go into it every week, actually having read every article that I can, like actually being an informant informed, like host or whatever. Uh, but this show is literally (laughs) like, watch my favorite universe and sit with you and chat about it. Like, that's it. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to make this something different. And so, you know, I hope people like it, but if they don't, it's, that's the goal of this is just to enjoy ourselves as friends and, some people really like that, and other people don't. And it's totally cool if it's not your style. Yeah, it's not your thing. Yeah. Also, like, I, I, yes, I wanted to do this because I love Star Trek. New Star Trek was happening. Wanted to talk to you about it. That's what we've been doing. I remember when we, we, when we uh, lived together, we didn't have mm-hmm. a new Star Trek. And mm-hmm. when, like, one night you said, you were talking about, like, just a minute ago, we would talk about stuff that was similar. I remember one night we just, like, sat up. 
and we're just like, no, we're getting to the bottom of this. And we like over the course of the night conversed and figured out that Donnie Darko makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, the tangent universe doesn't make sense. This, <laughs> yeah. Oh man, we have many, many nights like that. Uh, just yeah, breaking down like every whatever universe we're talking about. Like I said, we've been doing this through six, like talking in the same way about these things, and it's just a fun yep. thing to do. Like it is as of late. I think I've told you this, but we. I've gotten a little overwhelmed because I do too many podcasts mm-hmm. and uh, there are other podcasts that I'm considering like pairing back a little bit. I don't want to, there's no, there's no podcast I want to leave behind, but I'm trying to control how much of my time they're taking. Cause like mm-hmm. Binge is a symbol. We did 20 movies in like a month and a half and it was too much. Like it just was way too much. It was like, I was doing like four movies a week and just even watching that many movies was hard and keeping up with it and then doing a good job podcasting about it. So I was like, okay, for right now, Bender's Assemble is going to be a one show a week podcast. I'm not going to do more mm-hmm. than that. Like, and I'm going to try to plan it out better so that it's always one show a week instead of like, you know, a big gap. And then suddenly we have like, oh, we got to do 20 movies this month. Yeah. It's just too much. So, uh, so, so anyway. Uh, I- the, the, I think it's fun and ironic that you're trying to make Bingers Assemble the least bingeable podcast. <laughs> We're binging the movies, not the, the, the podcast isn't the binge. Um, but. My, but what I was going to say is I'm trying to pare those yeah. down to where it's like a little like some of the smaller shows, particularly I'm trying to pare them down. So they're less of my focus, mostly because I want to focus on a couple of the new shows to grow them. Um, yeah. And uh, the, but I, you know, I was talking to, well, what about this one? The numbers on this one aren't as good as this. And it's not as much return on this one. And duh, duh, duh. it's not growing the same speed. And I looked at STU and I was like, I don't even look at that one. Like, I don't, I'm not going to like compare yeah. the numbers on that one. I'm not, I'm not here for that. Like <laughs> this one's because yeah. I love Star Trek and I love Dave and that's, that's yeah. all. That's all. And, and likewise, but also like, I don't like many Star Trek podcasts and I feel like mm. it, it's because most Star Trek podcasts either fall into one of two categories. One, there are a bunch of guys who are just actively shitting on it because it's not the thing they thought it was back in the nineties or was to me more common is, is like two P two or more people trying very hard to sound like they are Vulcans on star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, that. I'm not here for that. Like what I like, what I love, the kind of podcasts I love are just a couple of people sitting around having a conversation. Right. Yeah, yeah, and joking, joking around, and making dick jokes and whatnot, but also, you know, somewhat <laughs> staying on topic. Right. That's what I make. I agree with so, that. Yeah. All except for the dick jokes. I like, I like a clever dick joke. I like a clever, rare dick joke. I thought you were going to say, I prefer a clitoris joke. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, look, there's not that big of a difference. It's, you know, I love clitoris jokes, but like, I can't ever find them. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem, man. <laughs> Will Fowler on Facebook. Oh, by the way, Willem, before you go, uh uh-huh. my dog is named uh Quilliam. But oh. I have since gone to Quillum or Quillum Defoe is often what I call him. Oh nice. Yeah. So kind of based on the name Willem. So have you have you <laughs> Whenever you write in you- I think about my dog. Sorry about that. That didn't that sounded insulting. I didn't mean it that way. I don't remember I my dog. Which, which host did it, but one some host, maybe it was Conan, had Willem Dafoe on the sh- on his show, and like pulled up this like really old clip from like, I guess like Actor Studio or something, or where he he was like starting out and he mm-hmm. pronounced his name William Dafoe, <laughs> and he's like they were like what. We've all been pronouncing your name wrong this entire time. And he was like, yeah, I, I, this sounds more, you know, cinematic. It's, it's, That's funny. He just changed his name because he didn't like the way it sounded. It's funny. It, but did he change the spelling too? Cause it wasn't Will, it's Willem, right? On the, I think it is. I don't know. He said William, but he was like a college student. Okay. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> I listened to an interview recently uh, with him. I think it was actually may have been inside the actor studio, but it was a more recent uh, inside the actor studio. And it was just him talking about his career and like his young career and stuff is really interesting. Yeah. He's, he's, the clip he's, that I'm talking about, like he was a student and he was asking the actor on stage. Oh, a wow. question. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Cool. 
Okay, let's anyway. get next feedback. Will Fowler on Facebook says, Hey guys, I hope you see this. I haven't interacted in a while. <laughs> I actually did read this one. <laughs> so I responded on Facebook. <laughs> he says, I haven't interacted in a while. Anyway, about the red door and what is behind it. My most horrible self first thought, Picard's mom, hanging from a rope. Oh gosh. Oh it's lord. Not my, it's not my fault I'm so dark. Blame the second season. Live long and prosper. That's it. That's the whole <laughs> feedback. And we started this with crazy theories. That was the whole like beginning of this episode. I think that just should be this episode. This episode's the crazy theory episode. Um, yeah, that's terrible, Will. Why did you put that in my mind? <laughs> he won't even know her at all. It'll just be like yeah. a random woman hanging. Yeah. What a dark season two, for real. Oh, gosh. Yeah. And now look. I edited it for brevity, but now upon thinking back, it seems almost like a Norm MacDonald bit because he said Picard's mom and Jack's grandmother hanging from a rope. <laughs> so it's, it's yep. just like bringing in this, like, and Jack's grandmother, you know. <laughs> you can definitely deliver that in the Norm voice and it works for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for writing in, man. I, I, I don't mind you getting dark. I'm good. Uh, that's, that is pretty dark, though. <laughs> that is dark. It's really dark. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> we'll just lay that. I'm just going to lay in the floor and, and stink up the place. No, Not because it's no. bad feedback, but because it makes me sad. Just <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang that feedback from a rope, I tells you. But like like a like a place... A place of honor type rope. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna stick that the head of that joke on a pike, but like a place of honor, room. like a place of honor pike. <laughs> <laughs> we're not killing. We're not killing the feedback. We're we're honoring it <laughs> with ropes and pikes. We're honoring it with giving it rest, <laughs> eternal rest. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh we, we got one last piece of feedback of course uh we we leave that feedback for mr stew little stew uh, stew sends us an email titled now who's the fucking solid vatic <laughs> <laughs> good one <laughs> hello <laughs> well <laughs> I guess those crew members won't be in Star Trek Legacy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm assuming he means the one killed on the bridge. Yeah, the ones that got, yeah. It's kind of weird how there's very few Betazoids in the Starfleet that we know about, other than Deanna, who's half human, and Lon Suter from Voyager, who's dead. You'd think they'd, ju <laughs> they'd jump into having more of an inexpensive alien, ex alien species who look almost identical to humans, except for an eye thing that just requires contacts. That is interesting. Mm. Of course, I guess you could say that a lot of the crew members are, are Betazoid. And maybe, uh, maybe the ones of the upper echelon classes like uh, wouldn't, wouldn't have abilities that were quite so uh, pronounced. Like... Mm. You know, but yeah. I don't know what Betazoid class system is like anyway. Yeah, I don't know either. Uh, as far as, I mean, I don't know. They might all just be naked. But I, I suspect that there has to be some kind of class system because of who Lawaxana was. She seemed very mm. hoity-toity. Right. Very, she very worried classist. about, yeah, keeping up with the Joneses and making sure everyone mm -hmm. knew they were of certain ilk. Yeah. Um. Anyway. Stu continues. Seven's don't call me Hanson stuff is so weird to me. I know it's kind of a trans allegory, but I don't think it completely tracks because personally, I wouldn't want to keep the name that was forced on me by an aggressive species that killed my parents and altered my personality. If it's meant to be a trans allegory, then that unfortunately makes the Borg more analogous to supposed groomers, which I don't think is meant to be the intent. I have issues with how the Hugh plot made the Borg feel more sympathetic too, but at least he got a name that didn't come from them. I agree. Yeah, I mean, I see it. I think the idea is just that, like, she gets to be who she wants to be. You know what I mean? Right. Like, and it's and I think I think I can't really remember if I'm being perfectly honest. 
how that all played out in Voyager. Um, yeah. Well, he does say, wait, actually looking into it, Seven's parents were not killed, they were assimilated, and we don't know what their current status is. That makes her apparent abandonment of her human background more iffy to me. Her apparent abandonment of her human background more iffy. Um, hmm, okay. Yeah. Well, I, I was just going to say, I think it's more, for, for, for that character, I think it's more about who she chooses to be and uh like i think that she at some point she just lost all connection with the name annika hansen you know she no Mm -hmm. longer feels connected to that name so yeah i think as part of the crew of voyager she made seven of nine her identity right she decided what that meant to her yeah and and and, and sort of developed her because she was such a child when she was uh taken in that like uh, she had no real personality at that point. You know, I mean, it's sure she yeah. had a personality, but like she doesn't remember or connect to it anymore. And everything that she is, when when she was disconnected from the collective, she still was very much connected to the Borg. It took her a while before she really realized like that she was happy to be out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like for a while, she was sort of a hostage on Voyager, at least a few episodes. I, th- I think, you know, her keeping the name seven of nine is more indicative of her time on Voyager and what that meant to her and her character growth there. But yeah. then to have Shaw dead naming her like he is, um, is a reminder that she is not accepted in Starfleet still mm. by many and is almost like saying that like she is the worst of what she is. And, mm. you know, I think she has to, like, the reason she's so, you know, concerned about it is like, no, this is what I've chosen. I did get out and, you know, screw you guys. But I, I do, I do understand what Stu is saying. And I, I did think about that the other day, actually, a little bit. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, I do think that there is a, uh, if one were so inclined that someone could look at it and go like, yeah, see the board groomed them just like the, the trans do like, yeah, you could totally like, if you are of like mind and pull over, try to pull that allegory to his logical conclusion. Sure. You know, sure. It's problematic is what I'm saying. The way they, they yeah. did that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can see it. I can see it. I, I, but I, it, to me, it's just that she gets to choose who she is, and that's yeah. who she, that's the uh, person she chose to be, and, and and she identifies more with that name, and that's who she is, and that's all that matters. And it's, I guess mm-hmm. it's more like no matter what we think, like and no matter what Shaw thinks, that's who she thinks, and that's what matters. Yeah. Yep. Um. Bum, 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 bum. Oh, he says, uh, "What a surprise! They chose the aliens to kill first. Yes. <laughs> yeah, always. <laughs> it's the old discovery maneuver." Mm. <laughs> Stu says the Riker Deanna Wharf thruple seems like a possibility. I don't mm. think so. Oh, I can kind of see it. I don't. I don't think Riker and Wharf are going to be down for that. Wharf loves his pizza. What? I don't know. Wharf loves pizza. It was just like a weird. Joke. I don't know. There's no evidence. I, what, I have no yeah, evidence for Worf liking. I just uh, mean he legitimately loves Worf. Loves War- I meant Worf's pizza. Like Worf loves his pizza, so he would he would be up for hanging around a man with a stone pizza oven. <laughs> oh, like, I forgot that Riker made pizza. I was like, is pizza? How did you forget that Riker made pizza? That's the whole I thing. Was like, is they talked pizza- about this episode. <laughs> no pizza. I was just like pizza was, was not like, any kind of sexual. Uh, if if I if I if I wanted to go there, I would have said he he likes his pepperoni, and that would have been or Worf you know. likes his pie maybe. But yeah, I didn't know what you meant. I was like, what is? is no, I just is meant pizza. Troy's vagina with <laughs> like Riker's ball topping. I don't understand. Oh lord, oh lord. I don't know what you're going for. Your dark sinister mind. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway. <laughs> uh, the scene of Data and Laura's mental standoff is so much like me and Dave's morning routine, it's scary. <laughs> <sighs> oh, Stu. <laughs> Stu continues, I mean, Vatic 
could have survived that, right? Just thaw her out and watch the blobs fuse back together T-1000 style. Mm-hmm. I- I'm, I'm good with her not. Mm. Well, I, th- I think it's a possibility she did, though. I think she could return. I don't I think guess. it's likely. <laughs> no, I think they were trying to go for something a little more definitive. Yeah. But I definitely <laughs> immediately thought, like, okay, is she going to, like, like, you know, head toward the warp engine and get warmed up, and then we see her goo back together? She's still out in space, so it's still unlikely we'll see her, but you never know. Yeah. Data and Jordy's scene was nice, and I hope Data's upgrade means we get to c- get to hear him call someone a motherfucker by the end of the season. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I, I don't know, man, but I hear it. I mean, sure, but, you know, judging by how many people I saw online upset at the very notion of Qu- Quentin Tarantino directing a Star Trek movie, mm. I'm not sure they're going to... They're, they're willingly going to do that. Yeah, man, that horse is out of the barn, though. They've They've, they've done... They've given multiple fucks this season, or at least they well, gave one fuck this season. Yeah. I can't remember who gave it, but someone said fuck yep. this season. All we need now is for Data to show up and start dropping the N-word every five seconds. Oh. That'll be pure Quentin Tarantino Trek. Oh, that's no, that I do, I do not approve that message. I don't either. <laughs> I do want to see the Quentin Tarantino Trek, though. I'm very curious what he was going to do. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> hopefully he wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Uh, eight episodes in and no seven slash Rafi scenes so far, even when they're both now on the same ship. I'm going to have to suffer some more domestic drama next week in my epic space opera show, aren't I? Probably not. Mm-hmm. I mean, maybe. I don't know, Stu. If they haven't seen each other so far, why would they now? It's kind of seemed like they're broken up and okay with it. Or eh, they they seem kind of okay with it. I don't know. They seem like a little awkward about it. That actually, when I was we were talking about the possibility of uh, Seven being a changeling, I was thinking like, yeah, we haven't had that many scenes with Raffi, which Raffi would be the one to figure it out if anyone was going to figure mm-hmm. it out, you know. Um, and that maybe that's evidence to the fact. Maybe they we will get a scene with them, and that's when Raffi will figure it out. Raffi loves to figure out a secret. <laughs> That's her whole thing, man. I wrote a song about it. I know you did, buddy. <laughs> I know you did. Search Raffi by the garage, everybody. It needs some sweet, sweet listens. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Polish the pewter while you're doing it. And then write in and tell Matt you did it. Why Why does it always have to go there? Why? Well, I mean, you got to do something while you're doing chores, you know? You, you got to <laughs> polish the pewter anyway. All right. All right. Yeah. Let's, let's get a guest coming Stu's over. <laughs> oh, wait. You think I meant that? Oh, oh I know what you meant. Oh, Matt. Dark Matt. soul. A dark soul of yours. Uh, it's ancient and weak. <laughs> it's ancient. <laughs> <laughs> the face is Dave. The face is Dave. <laughs> I am Red Jack. <laughs> um, <laughs> <clears throat> Stu says continues to be good, though angsty Jack is a bit of a low light for me, and all without not getting the answers about him I thought would be revealed this week. Still, Data's return, the Enterprise crew reunion, and the defeat of Vatic were all strong. Take care, Stu. Mm, thank you, Stu. Thank you, man. Uh, I think this week we will definitely find out what's up. You think? Absolutely. 100%. I don't think so. I give it a 100% chance that we will find out what's going on, like who's behind the red door will happen this week. Because they ended the yeah. episode with the red door like opening and us not seeing what's going on. And I they're going to answer it next week. Because if they keep us holding on for another week, it's ridiculous. Once you like get yeah. to that point, like I said on a review episode... I think they're going to do something stupid like, oh, Deanna and Jack have been knocked unconscious by this reveal. And then at the end of the episode, we'll finally like get them waking up and telling the truth or, like of the situation. Then we, that, yeah, I think that's when we're going to, we're going to find out something. Now that might not be the a- same answer as to who the face is. It sounds like the face and the dark uh, secret or whatever are two different things. Yeah. That's interesting. 
That's interesting. Uh, you know, I'm still holding out hope for eight, four, seven, two, I th- you know, and I'm also, man, I would love it to be Sela somehow <laughs> the Romulans and Sela. Ah, mm, yeah. I just, uh, you know, it would be nice. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. I don't know. I'm also just kind of tired of the board. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear that. But it makes sense for, for Picard's character. Yeah. 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 Mm. Um, I could see it. I could see it. I'm trying to think of any other like it maybe it is maybe it is Shin's on. Um It'd just be great if Tom Hardy shows up. Oh, like, it'd be so yeah. good. If Tom Hardy Why? Tom Hardy <laughs> playing an alternate Picard would be so much fun. Mm-hmm. Like, today's Tom Hardy. Uh he'd be great. This is like yeah, he's like mirror universe Picard and oh. he got like age regression. Yeah. He was also like in my timeline it matters if you're bald. So I got plugs. <laughs> <laughs> but Tom Hardy bald, like shaved bald, could look pretty great too, though. I mean, we've seen it before with Shinzon. Bane, but like, yeah. Oh, also when he was Shinzon. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> you were saying Tom Hardy could look great bald, and I'm like, yeah, he was Bane. <laughs> oh, right. Oh, and Shinzon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like I totally forgot that he was the original Shinson after I referenced the fact that he was. Never been. That's weird. That was weird, man. Are you lost, sir? <laughs> it's weird when you're like making a podcast and someone like looks at you on the podcast and realizes how really broken you are in the brain. <laughs> yeah, did I ever tell you about the uh, the existential comment while getting a uh, replacement tire? I had no. just been up like I had just been up all night and then like I was driving and my tire went flat and then like I had to wait for a tow truck. Anyway, get finally get to this like place outside of town where and bought a tire as they were closing. And I'm standing there waiting for them to pull my car around. And this woman walks up and she's like, Excuse me, sir, do you work here? And what I meant to say mm-hmm. was, no, ma'am, I don't work here. What I did say was, no, ma'am, I'm not real. <laughs> yeah, I remember you saying that. I remember you telling that story. Oh, man. That's that's pretty broken, Dave. That's pretty broken. <laughs> and then I just started cracking up because I was like, <laughs> no, that was that was, may have been just a Freudian slip. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I'm real. All right, guys. Well, we'll be back. Uh, I guess uh, this will drop on Wednesday morning or something. Um, and yeah. so late tonight, early Thursday, we'll have a new podcast with a new episode of Picard, episode nine. Um, apparently, they're playing the premiere. Uh, I guess that's the news we didn't talk about. Apparently, they're putting the premiere in IMAX theaters. Yes, uh, they are. They're releasing it. Um the this coming up episode Vox and the uh, series finale is both going to be in IMAX theaters uh, April nineteenth. The tickets are free. If you go through the website, I'll stick it on the, in the show notes uh, for you guys if you want to go because mm-hmm. tickets are become available uh, in the morning of uh, sorry about noon I guess for us right. uh, Wednesday April twelfth. But the website does say you know. Obtaining a ticket does not guarantee admission because of yeah. you know space requirements and whatnot. I have a feeling and, it's gonna be um, one of those stupid things where you just get there and there's too many people. So we'll have to go if we want to try to go. First of all, we have to drive to Atlanta. Secondly, it's gonna be mm-hmm. like we have to go really early. I'm guessing. Yeah, I have almost completely decided I'm probably not even gonna try because yeah. they they are not even telling us yet. Like on the website what time it starts. Right. I'm sure that that may be information may be available once it drops for tickets, but like maybe even so if it was if it was a couple of days before the premiere mm-hmm. drops or before the finale drops on uh Paramount Plus, I probably would do it and even just like go and try, but it being the same day. Yeah. Like, it was it's on a fr- it's on a uh Wednesday too, which means yeah, it'll be that it'll be you'll you we'll get to see it a few hours early, basically. Basically, yeah. by the time we watch it and then drive back to Birmingham, it'll be like on Paramount Plus, mm-hmm. you know. So I don't know if it was if it was here, it would have totally it would totally be worth it because you get For a poster sure. and they're doing like a you get to see a uh, 
a Q and a that the cast and crew did after the show. Um, but I don't know what Star Trek's Atlanta base is like. Like if I know if I came here, if I went here, there would be like no one. Right. You probably wouldn't even need to get anything online. Just go up there and be like, Hey, can I get a ticket? But, um, I don't know what Atlanta does with Star Trek. I don't know how their fan base is. I don't they actually turn out for it. Yeah. I don't either. Well, and, you if, know. if you guys are interested, that's dropping uh, next Wednesday or well, they're dropping tickets drop today, I guess. And then, uh, next Wednesday, you can go watch it in IMAX. I'd love to see it in IMAX. I would go sure. if I could just get tickets. If they like ran it for a week in theaters or something, I would definitely go, even if I'd already seen it. But uh, yeah, yeah, I wish, I wish. Um, all right, guys, we'll be back soon. Um, I got to get off here so I can edit this thing and get it into your lovely, lovely ears. Mm. All of you have such just, lovely ears. Just sensually slide it in. It's well lubed. Just all right. ready to insert. I was... <laughs> I'd gone far enough, Dave. I don't think you did. <laughs> this far, no further. <laughs> the line like, must be it, drawn here. <laughs> this podcast will be lubed up and slipped into your ear so far it touches the roach you don't know is there. Uh, Joel on true. <laughs> <laughs> Live long and prosper. Thank you for listening to the Star Trek Universe Podcast, a Stranded Panda production. If you'd like to hear more from David C. Robertson, check out the DC On Screen Podcast or maladjusted.tv for his web videos. If you'd like to hear more from Matthew Carroll, check out the Marvel Cinematic Universe Podcast or listen to his music. Just search for Matthew Carroll anywhere you get music. 